Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good morning everybody. Happy Saturday and welcome to another edition of uh, the Access of Trader .com. Uh, weekend update show. Before we get started, uh, I want to be one of the very first uh, to wish all the wonderful moms, uh, grandmothers, aunts, hell, even single dads, uh, a happy, uh, wonderful Mother's Day uh, weekend. Everybody knows the mom is the foundation uh, of the home, the rock, uh, everything, the strength. So we not only do we celebrate the mom um, you know, this weekend, but you should always celebrate your mom, uh, while they're alive. And that's the name, uh, of the game. So hopefully all you moms, uh, have uh, just an incredible, incredible, uh, experience with your family this weekend and continue to, uh, love each other. Uh, other than that, guys, thank you very much for, uh, tuning in. If you can just take, uh, one second and click a like, uh, help the channel out. Click a like, uh, share, subscribe, uh, all that good stuff so we can continue uh, to provide uh, this contact. So uh, let's talk about the tape. Uh, obviously, the big story going into this past week was uh, the reclaiming of the 50-day moving average on all uh, the major benchmarks, NASDAQ, uh, Russell, Dow Jones, and the SPY. Uh, that is, was kind of a big deal. Uh, because again, uh, as we talk about the 50 day moving average is the momentum shit. It's the momentum changer. Uh, it's the momentum shifter. It's the sentiment shifter. It's the directional bias shifter. And you can see here when, uh, the S uh, when the QQQs lost the 50 day moving average on, uh, what was it on 415 we had this really, really disgusting move down. And now that we reclaim the 50-day moving average, you can see the price action dramatically change. Even on days uh, that the market looks weak, is not really weak. It's just digesting. It's just absolutely resting. And if you look at all the indexes uh, for the week, again, it, it really does demonstrate how, how the importance of the 50-day moving average is. Whoever has control of the 50-day moving average has control of the midterm market sentiment. If you guys watch this video, the five day for me and the 10 day, kind of the shortest sentiment, the 50 day is the birth of a trend. That's the most important part. Uh, market continues its winning ways. The Dow pits in uh, eight consecutive green sessions for the week. Uh, S&P gained about 2%. Dow Jones gained about 2.2%. And the NASDAQ, even though it was the trailer of the three, right? The trailer of the big three, it's still doing an incredible jo a good job. Reclaimed that 436.50. Uh, and now we're just, just grinding higher. We're not that far away uh, from all-time highs again above this uh, 449 level, uh, which was on uh, 321. Uh, all the other indexes just flying. You know, the Dow is absolutely going nuts. Uh, the SPY uh, is going nuts. Uh, the IWM, that was much of the you know redheaded stepchild uh, you know, throughout the whole rally, right? It was kind of like the last to go. Even it's doing a really, really uh, nice job above the 50-day moving average and continue goes higher. Uh, and if you look at the QQQs, they're just basically grinding right now, grinding low volume rest distribution. You can tell when when the in the market leads, it leads with the Nasdaq 100. Usually, semiconductors uh, to lead the way. Now it's just kind of resting. If you if you traded this week, you know how aggressive. Monday was with NVIDIA. You know how aggressive Thursday and Friday was with Tesla. We'll get to those uh, in, in a second. But the most important part is, guys, and I see this uh, more and more now in social media, um, you know, people are trying to short this rally the same way people are trying to buy the dip uh, in the early stages uh, when the market does reclaim a major level. Don't do it. Don't do it. Again, if you're doing it for a scalp trade, that's fine. But if you're betting directional, on which way the market's going to go. And every single day, you try to short the S&P. Every single day, you try to short the, the NASDAQ, especially into, into profit-taking weakness. You're going to get run over. And you see that every single day because you can see with your eyes how the markets, how the indexes are just grinding back up above the 50-day moving average. So just understand, again, the most basic thing, and I reiterate this on every video, above the 50-day is bullish. 
below the 50 days bearish. And that kind of leads to a segue of what we had and what we saw uh, this past week. Uh, a lot of distribution action going on, a lot of stocks going sideways, but a lot of names uh, really kept on progressing price action. That's a very, very important thing. We'll, start, we'll go with them kind of one by one. Uh, Meta, I'll tell you one thing. Meta has been the strongest one ever since, you know, just from the time it blew up. But every single for every single tech name has been pretty much going sideways, with the exception of uh, for the exception of Amazon. Uh, but Meta has been grinding up, really, really doing a great job. Uh, this is now in the first close above supply here, and every single shot that the Nasdaq potentially took uh, this week on the weakness, it, it really held serve. You can see how nice, smooth is just kind of grinding up on the five-day moving average. Again, if the market continues uh, its winning ways, you know, keep an eye on this thing for watch for a potential move. Uh, back into the 50-day moving average, uh, into this uh, 488 level. Uh, you got Amazon, right? Had a great earnings breakout, um, beautiful quarter earnings breakout, getting a little bit of top heavy here. Again, nothing nothing crazy to scream at, nothing crazy to uh, to get your attention. A little bit of a rolling top here, you know, could potentially come back in for a couple of days to kind of test this orderly uh, rest, this 10-day moving average. Nothing to uh, to be concerned with just orderly move back down uh, into the 10 day, probably one or, you know, probably two points or so. Uh, we'll, we'll probably get this thing stabilized for the next uh, leg up. Uh, Microsoft looks amazing, looks absolutely amazing. This is now the first close above uh, the 50 day moving average. Guys, watch Microsoft uh, on Monday. This thing starts confirming up. Uh, we could see a move back into this upper Bollinger Band uh, at 420s. That looks really, really good. Uh, Apple, you know, Apple had their event. Uh, the one thing that's, you know, the one thing that is bothering me a little bit on Apple. Um, and, and again, you won't, you won't really get a good understanding glimpse of it. If you just look at the chart and say, well, what's the big deal? Dan, it gapped up on earnings, had a really great quarter, or at least the price action was on great in that quarter, uh, less damage from China than anticipated, especially on the iPhone sales. And now it's just kind of going sideways. But the one thing that's bothering me about this whole move, this whole digestion move on, on Apple, usually when you have a digestion move, you have more green candles than red, right? If you look at this digestion move for the last one, two, three, four, five, six days, five out of six days closed lower than an open wheel, which is very, very odd in a digestion cycle. If you look at a lot of charts that are digesting, usually it would have greener closes than open, suggesting people bought the dip in the morning. Uh, to kind of move it back higher. But it, it's very, very odd that five of the last six days uh, that the stock closed with lower candles than open. But again, maybe maybe it's something, maybe it's nothing. I still think it needs to get above this 185 level on a close and start jolting back higher into this earnings high. So we want to give it uh, kind of the benefit uh, benefit of the doubt. Uh, Google, right? Another name had a great, great quarter. And as you can see, this is the opposite of Apple, right? It had a great quarter. It came in but now the last one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, you have six out of the last seven candles were green versus red, which basically tells you, hey, they did buy the uh, the dip at the open and now they're starting to take the stock higher. Again, just nestling around the you know, around the 10 day moving average, needs to get back above the five to kind of wake back up. But again, uh doing uh pretty well on uh, Netflix. You know, we've been talking about Netflix uh for the last, you know, for the last week or so. Uh, getting above the 50-day moving average. Again, this is another perfect example. The stock reclaims the 50, and now it's a nice move. We traded all the way up to uh, 624 from the 597 reclaim of the 50-day. If the market continues, again, you got about 633 uh, going in its future. Uh, AMD, uh, you know, AMD has been one of the head scratchers uh, in the semiconductor space. Uh, it's not participating like all the others. They're really not. Uh, it's 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 you could see it stand out like a sore thumb. And this whole distribution has been below the 50-day, right? Below the 50-day bearish, uh, below the 50-day moving average. And every single time it gets back up to the 20-day supply, it gets rejected. 20-day supply gets rejected. 20-day supply uh, gets rejected again. So it's something really to uh, pay attention to going into uh, next week. Uh, Nvidia is just playing possum, man. Again, ever since it reclaimed the 50-day moving average at 860, it's just been going sideways. Everybody's waiting for that next big move. Um, you know, they have earnings right around the corner. I believe it's next, the following week. I could be wrong, but I believe it's the following week. You know, I would love 
to see, I would love to see a move ahead of earnings uh, just because, and we probably will uh, if the market continues to hold, but right now it's a little bit in a holding pattern and it's kind of doing the same thing that Apple is, which I'm not loving, but I, again, I want to give it the benefit of the doubt of the last three out of the four days, lower candles than opens, but red, red candles and opens, again, lower closes uh, than open. But again, I want to give it the benefit of the doubt. Sometimes, again, there could be a reload seller in the crowd that they're trying to clean up. So I don't want to put uh, a lot of stock there. The one that is in trouble, and I'm sorry, guys, if you are um, if you are a perma bull of Tesla, I apologize in advance. Maybe leave the room for the next three minutes. I, I don't want to hurt your feelings, but data is the data, right? The, the facts are the facts. Um, you know, so majority of the move from the last calendar year has been below the 50-day moving average uh, when Tesla lost 235, and you can see 235 went all the way back down uh, to 138. You know, it lost 100 points. Uh, lost 100 points from January. That's a lot, right? It's a 40% plus uh, decline. They came out with earnings. Uh, the, the market deemed the price action that was already built into the lack of enthusiasm into the quarter. They had their worst. Again, we've been talking about this for a while. I don't think anybody can, uh, can refute it. And they had their worst quarter since 2012. But because the market discounted what was going on, they rallied the stock and they rallied it above the 50-day and they kept it up to 50 day. And this is kind of my point with Apple in the video. You see all these red candles that eventually rolled over. And that's kind of my point about, you know, Apple in the video. I, I don't like it yet, but I'm willing to give them the benefit of the doubt. But you can see here was the complete opposite. Tesla lost, right? The 50 day moving average on Thursday and Friday confirmed it. And this is the first close now below the 50-day moving average in this whole formation. And this now filled in this whole earnings gap. And remember, we were talking about for the last, uh, you know, for the last week or so when the stock was still trying to find its footing. And I said, well, you know, the stock's not really rallying. How long are people going to give it rope? How long are people going to sit there and go, well, we want to give it the benefit of doubt, but we do know at the end of the day, it did have its worst quarters in 12 years. And the market price action has spoken. Again, if you love the stock, and I love it. I mean, again, I don't, other than the, the Musk family, I don't know who, who, who loves or trades Tesla more than I do. Um, but I, I trade it in both ways. I love the price action. I, I have no affiliation uh, with the stock. It's a piece of paper. Um, and the point is, the stock is in very, very big trouble if it starts losing Friday's channel. As you can see here, uh, it's coming all the way into this uh, 67 area. Uh, we actually came in short on Thursday into Friday's action with a pair trade. Uh, we'll, we'll get to that in a second uh, with a pair trade. But it, guys, just watch this bottom channel here, okay? If Tesla loses 67 on a close, any close below 67, folks, look how much room you have, right? Again, you can see with your own eyes. Look how much room you have if we start losing this last support zone at 167. So if we start losing, guys, and again, I'm not saying it's going to happen in one day, but if we start losing 167 on a close, then this thing you know, has a lot of room down. So Tesla better get its act in order Monday, Tuesday to start reclaiming back uh, the five-day moving average. Because if we close below this last rising support uh, on the 20-day uh, support, there's going to be a lot of problems uh, in Tesla land. And, you know, Elon better come out and stick save this, you know, kick save the stock or something. Come better come out with some news because it's teetering on very, uh, very thin ice. And if you're a, a, a Tesla shareholder, uh, just understand again. And, and I understand it's going to go to 300, 500. Maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. But if it does lose 167 on a close, uh, it's going to have problems. So going into this next week, uh, obviously we're waiting for the Nasdaq to kind of wake up again. Uh, the last major uh, earnings report in the mega cap space is going to be NVIDIA. Uh, I believe it's next week. So let's see if we get a run up uh, this week. Maybe, you know, maybe get a 15, 20, 30 point run up ahead of earnings. But the key is, again, guys, just always remember in a bull market or a bull scenario above the 50 day, you are buying strong stocks into rising support. And in a bear market below the 50 day, you are shorting weak stocks into gap ups into supply. So that's that. So let's talk about uh, the pivots from Friday. Uh, again, this was the, you know, I came in short, um, I came in short Tesla 
long queues. I've been doing this pair trade, uh, pair hedge trade for years, absolute years. Uh, if you are interested, I, I think we could pull, put a link to this uh, in the in one of the descriptions, uh, or you can just search uh, access a trader and hedging. Okay, I did a you know 10, 15 minute video kind of describing uh, the process, but I've been doing this for years. So uh, basically, on Thursday night, uh, I'm taking a Tesla Q pair trade. Any close below 72.50, Tesla closed below 72. Uh, it's not the cleanest setup because it's still needed to to confirm 170. We'll get to that in a second. However, it's the first close below the 50 day. So I came in short. Uh, I came in short uh, Tesla, came in long queues. Queues are up $2 uh, at the open, which was great. And, and then Tesla went red. Okay. Tesla went red. And not only did it went red, Tesla confirmed the two prices, 7137 and 170. If they build below, can see 167. 168 next potential and look look what the low of the day is right look what the low on uh tesla is right traded all the way down to uh 167.65 guys i'm telling you this thing starts losing 67 on a close it could be pretty good so that's that uh microsoft continues to act well hasn't exploded yet uh but continues to act well literally closed at 14.67 uh, Apple traded up to 85, got rejected off 85. Again, needs to get back above that. That's why I'm having a little bit problems with uh, Apple with all these lower candles than open. Uh, Google still going through distribution, never got up to the 70, 71, 70s level, still going through distribution like a lot of other things. Uh, Reddit uh, never got back below the 48, 25. And NVIDIA gave a nice move, gave a nice little pop. And then it came all the way back, 903.55. Uh, needs to build. Here was NVIDIA, right? Here was NVIDIA, 903.55, traded up to uh, 9.14, but we're still waiting. I think like everybody else, we're still waiting for this top of the range here to finally confirm so we could get that push into that 9.40 area uh, ahead of earnings. Again, potentially, let's see if it does that or not. I believe that is it. Yep, I believe that is it. So going into uh, Monday, uh, again, any strength on Tesla, I want to I initially reject uh, into supply, but if it starts losing Friday's channel, um, I will be an aggressive seller uh, of it. Other than that, guys, uh, let me give you guys a couple of names. Uh, Reddit actually looks pretty good, folks. Watch Reddit uh, above this channel here. Uh, it stopped at the earnings highs, the exact same channel as it did on 3 the 28th. If Reddit this week can get above this channel here, uh, this thing could really wake up. Um, I like PLTR as a short, um, you know, if it gets back below this last support here, you can see it came out earnings and then they just sold the stock. Uh, all this thing need to do, if it could just get below this whole gap here. And again, maybe it doesn't, maybe it does this week, but I, I definitely want to watch it. If it starts losing that bottom of the channel here, I definitely want to be uh, an interesting seller of the stock. And let me give you guys a couple of more names. Um... Let me give you guys a couple of names. Uh, Micron uh, looks ready to go, consolidating. Uh, then again, everything is consolidating. Uh, Microsoft, like we talked about, consolidating. But I want to watch this thing on Monday. If it finally confirms uh, Friday's channel, this thing uh, could wake up as well. And that's about it. You know, that's about it. Everything else, I'm kind of watching it until it com comes out of its distribution cycle. Again, folks, if you are interested in pivots, there's a link below, a 30-day uh, discount, the trial. Come aboard. Uh, kick the tires. Uh, I think you'll like it. I think you'll like it. Um, it's it's totally it's totally price action based on technical analysis with the PS60 Twitch. Guys, God bless everybody. Again, moms, have an awesome, awesome Mother's Day. And with God's help, I will see you all on Monday. Take care.